So uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Pierre Young, and uh, oh, she didn't start this, oh, okay. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Pierre Young, um, and uh, for our, uh, welcome to our civic engagement project, and for our civic engagement project, um, we had organized a game conference, and I serve at Metro State University, by the way, uh, where I uh, do all kinds of direct service and uh, game night. Um, yeah, so to explain all our uh, hardships of our video game conference, uh, I will pass it off to Ma Matthew. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Matthew. I'm the CTEP member at the Arlington Hills Community Center. Um, so yeah, like Pierre said, our project was a video game conference and originally we wanted to host an in-person conference at the Arlington Hills Community Center um, over on the east side of St. Paul um, for specifically for east side youth. Um, so we had this like really fun three day event planned. Um, like we were gonna get out the VR headsets, iPads, just have lots of fun little mini workshops. Um, Kim was gonna teach a coding class using Scratch. And we even had plans to like raise funds for prizes, um, for food and drink, um, just to have like a really fun video game conference, video game related event. But of course then coronavirus happened and we had to drastically change what we were going to do. Um, and to talk about that a little bit more, I'm gonna pass it over to Arian. Um, hello all, uh, my name is Rachel Perrott. I'm the Sunrise, I'm the CTEP serving at Sunray Library in St. Paul, Minnesota. So when COVID-19 hit, um, so we made some major changes. We moved the date back to July to give us more time to sort of consolidate things and also get a handle on the situation. Uh, we also moved a lot of our resources onto one website. Uh, we also then started converting a lot of our events to things that could be done virtually. So we had a virtual scavenger hunt, a trivia competition via Kahoot, and we also organized streams of various games uh, via Twitch. And then to talk about the website itself, I'm going to pass it along to Kim. Hi everyone, my name is Kim Dove, I'll pronounce they them. I serve at the Maplewood Library in the Ramsey County Library System in Maplewood. Um, so yeah, we made a website and we basically just took all of the um, ideas that we were gonna do in person as classes, as presentations and activities, and just sort of made them into a virtual setting um, as like sort of virtual pages with different tutorials um, and links and whatnot. Um, and so we had various different pages, which we'll go over some of those, uh, feature some of those in a little bit, but we had stuff ranging from, um, if you're new to gaming, how do you get into gaming? Uh, how much does that cost? Um, to how do you create your own game, which was the coding class I was gonna do through Scratch, um, to how do you get a degree? in um, video game design or just how do you be more critical of the games media that you're consuming um, or how to like get into esports um, and then of course we also had links to our actual virtual events which arian will go over a little bit in a little bit so i'm going to pass it back to rachel i believe to talk about one of the pages Hey, Rachel, you're on mute. Oh, dear. Uh, <laughs> benefit of Zoom, I guess. Um, so when we, uh, within the new to gaming section, um, we had a page um, that went over the different genres of video games. So it had a general summary of those genres, as well as a set of recommendations that we curated for um, geared towards beginners within each genre. So generally our criteria were quality, but also um, usually an acceptable level of difficulty and then preferably something with a more affordable price tag or avail or something that was available on a wider variety of platforms. And then to talk about the scavenger hunt event, I'm gonna pass it along to Ariane. Yeah, so we basically decided to kind of gamify education about video games. So to do that, we had a trivia that we held in Kahoot's um, using the Cahoots website. Um, we'll be talking about that a little bit more in just a bit. Um, and then we also had a scavenger hunt, which was daily. All of these were themed after, like, we had a specific set of themes. Um, we'll be talking about that just a little bit, too. Um, but the, and then we also had a game creation page and a form for feedback as well as a registration page. All of these pages, um, participation in them could get us pri a prize 
generously supplied by Rachel. She had a bunch of extra codes for video games that she was going to give out. Um, and just to talk a little bit about the benefits of gaming and why it's important, I'm gonna pass it off to Matt. Um, yeah, so so we included a, a page on the benefits of gaming, um, just because like there's this really big stigma around video gaming that um, it's not worth your time or you, you won't gain any skills um, from it. But um, so in this page, we really dive into the more like cognitive benefits, um, the mental health benefits of gaming. Um, and we also uh, talk a little bit in this page about um, different opportunities that you can you can use your your gaming skills like as a career. And to talk about that a little bit more, I'm going to pass it over to Pierre. Oh yeah, so everybody likes money, right? Uh, guess what? You can get paid the game on Twitch, and we use uh, Twitch as our uh, platform for the gaming conference. Uh, it was really, really a lot of fun using Twitch. Uh, I invested in my own streaming equipment and my gaming PC. Um, uh, the, with the streaming mic, 4K camcorder, and green screen screen, um, which I'm using green screen right now on, on Zoom. But um, yeah, we had a lot of fun uh, monitoring the chat. Uh, we only had one viewer. Um, I, I also use Twitch myself. Uh, uh, follow me, Pierre the Gamer, at Twitch. Uh, <laughs> um, and to explain our schedule of, uh, of our events, uh, like diversity in gaming and all, all that, I will pass this off to uh, Kim and Ariane. Yeah, hello again, everyone. This is Kim. Um, so yeah, we basically had um, three days that we were going to do this conference uh, virtually. And this was, uh, as Rachel mentioned, we pushed it back to July, to the 14th to the 16th, so sort of middle of the week. Um, and each day had a different sort of theme, as Arian mentioned. And so the first day had a, how do you get started with gaming? Like, how do you get into it? What are some easy starter games? And how did we get into it? And like retro games that we used to play and just the retro games just uh, development of games in general. Um, and so we played some very interesting fun games that day, I think like Final Fantasy IX um, and like Super Mario and other fun stuff. And then the second day, we it was uh, diversity. And that's not only in terms of like diversity of identity, like LGBTQIA or POC, but we also um, talked about the diversity in like types of games. And so we talked about indie games, which are well known for their diversity and their amazing storytelling, uh, if un a little unrecognized. Um, and then the third day we talked about the benefits, which is a very large category. Um, but the benefits of like, how can it be educational? So like we played Minecraft, um, as we'll feature in a little bit. Um, and we also talked about how you could get into esports, as Pierre said, um, and sort of those different uh, communities. Um, and yeah, I'm going to pass it off to Ariane to talk about what we sort of did each day or plan to do each day. Yeah, so um, basically we split every single day into three categories. We started by introducing a scavenger hunt, um, encouraging teens to actually participate in it. And again, you got prizes for participation. Um, and then we had a live stream where we kind of gamed um, based on the theme of whatever the day was. So for example, on the diversity game, Pierre played Overwatch, with which if anybody knows that game, it has an incredible amount of diversity from various countries. Um, uh, and then also like on the third day, Benefits of Gaming, I actually played Age of Empires, which I um, had direct, uh, they are, there's actually a really active like esports community around that. So that was kind of to encourage that. Um, and then we also finally ended out with a trivia competition, which was, again, posted on Cahoots, and we just asked a bunch of questions, which we actually gave, uh, attempted to give kind of like hints about what the answers were going to be throughout the conference. Um, and we're just going to talk a little bit about what ultimately happened with the conference now. So ultimately, we had one registration. We did have a stream viewership that fluctuated between about four to eight, um, with the viewership high being about 14. Um, ultimately, I would say it wasn't really a success, but it was still a lot of fun. And the thing is, we've got a lot of resources now that can be used for the future. So um, the resources are going to continue to be there for anyone that any teenagers or any, I mean, adults could get benefit from it as well. Um, they, it's not like the page is going anywhere. Um, and what's more is that we have all the resources and the know-how to be able to host an actual in-person conference. And again, gamify the education, try to make that divide bridged a little bit um, in the future. Um, so anybody have any questions? 
All right. Uh, I appreciate the call out to my chickens on the screen too. I, that's a nice touch. That looks much better than my own chicken coop. All right, uh, let's roll into the questions here. So Eric Yang from Sunray is asking, uh, streaming can be taxing both physically and emotionally. Uh, what tips do you have for anyone looking to start? Mm. Can I answer that? Uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, like watch a lot of streamers and, and just like start on YouTube, um, this stream on Facebook, just like, just, just watch all of them and just like kind of like notice their characteristics and how they speak to people, uh, know your audience, know what games you play. Um, I play a lot of games. Um, I have no preference on games. I'm all, I'm all lo love about games and just like, like, uh, like just, just like kind of know to grow your audience and, uh, it, it does drain you emotionally. You gotta stay energized and pumped up, and just like I just have that energy where it's just like, you know, I, I can I can be funny and like goofy and all that, and like you know, be my own personality. But and, and, you know, even Matt, Ariane, Rachel, and Kim, like we all kind of like had our own energy and like entertain yourself, and and, and then, you know, you'll you'll be successful and, and you'll grow. Yeah, I would add on to that, that like really, especially with getting into gaming, just generally, um, especially given that it is a toxic community, unfortunately, or has toxic parts to it. The biggest thing I would say is, is that like make it your own, I think as Pierre is saying, and like do the things that are of interest to you, like play the games that are interesting to you, like have your own personality, be not afraid, be afraid to do that. And I think that was definitely a thing that we wish we were able to share with youth. Unfortunately, we didn't really have any youth attend this. I think I did see some questions about how we did reach out to youth. We did kind of struggle with that um, just because of COVID that like we weren't able to like do flyers and stuff like that. Um, looking at other questions in the chat here. How do they um, access the games? That's a good question. Um, anyone want to uh, answer I think that? Aaron was going to expand on Yeah, that. there was yeah, just something I was going to bring up that I forgot to bring up. Um, I did post a couple of links earlier on. I can repost them actually but it's a link to our website as well as a, link, a video compilation that I did of the actual streaming conference. You guys can actually kind of take part in with that if you're at all interested. All right. Got to see all right that. Let's <laughs> go back to Emily Perlman's question. Hi, Emily. And uh, Emily's asking, how did participants access the games? So generally it was um, a streaming sort of experience. So um, Twitch is a lot of, you know, someone's playing a game and then other people watch them play. And then with interactions um, through the chat, which we were also moderating. Um, and then in cases with where there were games with multiplayer aspects, um, we would um, post the link within the video uh, for joining that particular online room. Violet's asking, and we have a couple people in this group that are doing the program again uh, next year, uh, so it might be particularly interesting for you. Like, do you have ideas for the future on how to better engage with youth in the community with events like this? Yeah, I think Matt touched on that in his presentation that like, I think like we would potentially try to have Arlington Hills again as our site um, or something in that area to like actually have it as an in-person thing. Um, and then of course also uh, several of us are working at youth sites that we would engage with the youth at our site to tell them about the conference and like I even had the idea to try to purchase a bus pass um to like bring my teens from my site with me to Arlington House um so something like that I think is definitely of interest to us is just trying to actually do it in person again I think would help and if it's not in person, probably more time to get the word out because we tried to we made a flyer which we pushed virtually and we tried to get promotion through online platforms as much as we could, but I think with more time to prepare and let that information spread could help in the event that we weren't able to do it in person. Yeah, and I think a, a big advantage that this group has is like four out of the five um, are returning next year, so it'll be really interesting to see what um, can be accomplished. All right, uh, Christina, I think we they just kind of spoke to your question about how to get youth enrollment or how to make it known to youth. Mm -hmm. Um, let's go to Olivia's question. Uh, what are your thoughts on the depiction of mental illness in video games? Uh, for example, the never ending nightmares creator, you, for example, never ending nightmares creator used their experience to develop the game. 
-hmm. Yeah, I can speak to that a little bit because I was actually in charge of doing a lot of the trivia and I actually did questions directly relating to um, handicaps and how they're portrayed in video games. Um, and really, I think that it's a really innovative way to actually explore what people go through in their um, mental illness. Um, I discovered one that I actually don't think is appropriate, unfortunately, for teens, but it's called uh, Senua's Sacrifice. And that one is basically a ridiculously like well-researched, like they put a lot of work into actually researching this game. Um, and it deals with uh, actually, I believe schizophrenia, if I'm not mistaken. Um, that was the deal with it. Um, and just the level, they, they got all kinds of opinions from people who actually do suffer from schizophrenia to make sure that it, they had as accurate of a depiction of it as possible. So I just think that there could be a lot of potential. In particular, I do love the idea of using video games to kind of try try to make people more understanding and more empathetic. Um, they always say that stories make us more empathetic to other people. And I think video games put us at, at an even higher level of that because you're actually stepping into somebody's shoes that are different from your own experience. We have time just for one more question here and then we're going to move on to the next group. But Christina asks, uh, is Twitch free? Uh, having access to the internet is important for this. Uh, maybe this would have been an issue like with the registration uh, numbers and things like that. Yeah, Twitch oh. is free to like make an account through. Um, and particularly, I think that actually kind of poses in somewhat a bit of a barrier sometimes because you need to have an account to be commenting on somebody's stream. Um, and so if somebody's not able to do that and also access that internet piece of it, there is an app for Twitch um, on, that you can get on either of the app stores. Um, and so like that might be a way that if you use like cell signal, you could technically like access Twitch that way. Um, but yeah, that's definitely a thing that like, um, we're thinking about maybe if we do this for next year. So good yeah. point. And I'd also add in that um, Twitch is to stream is definitely a lot more cost prohibitive because you need a certain level of equipment to stream. But in order to watch things on Twitch, um, there's a paid version of the account, but really um, to watch someone stream is free and much less tech intensive. Mm -hmm. And we even showed that during our conference, like we have various uh, different people stream, like Rachel streamed or I streamed, who are just using like a regular laptop um, and very simple rough. things. And then we had people like Pierre, who like has all this equipment and can show you the sort of range that you can do in streaming. Um, and like we were able to stream either one. Um, it was just a different quality. That's all. 